Shalom, everyone. How are you tonight? Oh, we have a good group. Let me put my glasses on so I can see everybody's name a little bit better. Let's see, guest 235 from Halifax. I don't know who you are, I don't think. Adele's here, Troy. Lavana, hi. Guest 920, New York City. Franklin, hi. Now I'm going to expect you to be my personal greeter in case anybody comes in. And guest 877, Doc, is that you? Wow, this is wonderful. Now, I want to uh, warn you tonight that uh, we have a little bit of a, I'm presuming you can hear me, by the way. I didn't ask for a sound check from you. We have things a little bit different tonight, so you're going to have to bear with me while I change slides, etc., etc. I might be a little bit awkward, and I have put up some transliteration, which you know, and having heard me try to read transliteration before, you know I can't do it. No, I'm not dyslexic, but for some reason when Hebrew comes out of my mouth, reading the normal way is just doesn't work for me. So I'll be reading from the Hebrew, and hopefully it will sound like the transliteration that's up sounds when you say it. Since I can't do it, you're going to have to let me know how it is. Everything's fine here. Thanks, Troy. I appreciate you letting me know. Um, we do have some new videos for Micha Mocha and uh, the healing slide from Debbie Friedman is uh, a lot nicer, I think. You'll enjoy it. And I was able to, actually I wasn't able to, my assistant was able to put some music over the words of the prayers for Ahavad Alam and Vashamru, which is nice. So we'll get to have everything at the same time. And I did select some uh, different prayers uh, and blessings trying to orient them specifically for a Kabbalah Shabbat service. And as I said, um, at the request of some of you, and I can certainly see why, just because I can't read transliteration, nor can I read the Hebrew and write transliteration, I know that some of you prefer that, and so I've tried to do my best. I still have a couple that I don't have it up for, but I'm working on it. So, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, while I'm here on this slide, we're going to discuss tonight a little bit of a lighter subject than usually we address. More than the parchment, scribes in a kosher sefer Torah. Boy, did I learn a lot. A lot of minutia, actually, that I didn't know before, and I always love learning something new, um, no matter how minor it is. So this is great. And you know who I am, so I'm your host for the evening. Very clear here. Thanks, Franklin. I appreciate it. If something happens, I have Erica here with me. She's uh, reading the chat for me, and she taps me on the arm when there's something I need to pay attention to. So feel free to type in anything in the chat room. And if you're a number, oh, Jacob, hi. Anybody else come in? Franklin, you're falling down on the job. You've got to welcome Jacob. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'll take myself out of the corner here. Refreshed and renewed, attired in festive garments, with candles nodding dreamily to unutterable expectation, to intuitions of eternity, some of us are overcome with the feeling as if almost all they would say would be like a veil. There is not enough grandeur in our souls to be able to unravel in words the knot of time and eternity. One should like to sing for all men, for all generations. There is a song in the wind and joy in the trees. The Sabbath arrives in the world, scattering a song in the silence of the night. Eternity utters a day. Where are the words that could compete with such might? I think that's just beautiful. Now here, we're going to try out this new thing and let me know um, what you think. You'll be able to read the transliteration uh, from the music very well. It's very clear. And I think that this is actually Debbie Friedman doing this. Yes, 
Well, when Adele said a couple of weeks ago that that was done much better when it was uh, set to music, she was certainly right, and I'm glad I was able to find that. Because as you can hear, I'm a little croaky, and trust me, I wouldn't have been able to sing it as well as she did. And now I get to put up one of my favorites, which is Hine Matov, because I'm so happy that we're together tonight. And as you know, this is from Psalm 133. I'm so happy that all of you are here with me. And as you know from last time, my two cousins, uh, both of whom are Jewish, uh, have moved away. They're not staying with me in my house anymore. So uh, from that point on, you have been my family for Shabbat evenings. So thank you so much. I'm so glad so many of you are here with me tonight. I really appreciate it. This is how... Um, well, Rabbi Nachman and we do in my home started off his uh, Shabbat rituals. May it be God's will that I be privileged to receive this holy Shabbat with happiness and joy, with song and excitement. Protect me so that no sadness or depression, no anguish or worry will mar my Shabbat. May I be happy with all my soul, with all my heart, and with all my strength. Let this happiness without limit encompass the world, your people Israel, me, my loved ones, and the members of my household. Now, as you know, and I probably say it every time, and I'm sorry if I'm being repetitive, uh, candles. It's a rabbinic institution to be lighting the candles, and this is what actually ushers in the Sabbath. We're supposed to have a minimum of two, and that comes from the fourth of the Ten Commandments. 
appearing in two places in the Torah, to remember and to observe, appearing respectively in Exodus and Deuteronomy. These lights are only flickering flames, yet flames illumine our uncertain steps. Flames purify and renew, soften and refine. They brighten and make warm. Flames remind us of Sabbaths long past and of their beauty that delighted our hearts. May they inspire us to work for the great Sabbath of peace. And now the candle blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kidishanu b'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu leharik ner shel Shabbat. So we've lit our candles and now we start pretending one of my favorite pastimes. We've gone to shul, we returned home before we eat, and Rabbi Yossi ben Yehuda in the Talmud says that when we return from shul, we're accompanied by two angels, one good and one bad. Shalom Aleichem is from the 17th century that's traditionally sung around the Shabbat table. I do in my home, so please listen to it with me. Um, it's purportedly based on this midrash. Here is the hauntingly beautiful Shalom Aleichem. Before we go on, oh my goodness, my voice is getting croaky. Gus, is that you? I'm so happy to see you. And um, Lanny's going to be up next, and he's at Bike Week, but he's missed you, and I'll be letting him know that you, you made it. And my hugs to you and hugs to you from all of us here. Hope you're doing okay. We're going to go on with our uh, rituals now, and here's... take myself out and put Lanny in. As I said, he's at Bike Week in Daytona, so he's actually not too far away from me. He's going to do Kiddush first. And um, as you know, a typical one, a regular one, we would be reading a section of the creation story from Genesis that describes how God rested on the seventh day, a blessing over the wine and a blessing over Shabbat itself, and these latter two are what Lanny's going to be doing for us now. Oh, 
Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, Pore, Pore hagafen, Amen. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, Asher kiddushonu b'mitzvoto v'ratzavanu, B'shabat kodsho, b'ahava u'vraton hinchilanu, Zikaron l'ma'ase b'reshi, Ki hu yom t'chila l'mikra e'kodesh, Zecher l'siyat mitzrayim, Ki vanu v'achata, Vyotanu kidashta, Mikohamim, Vishabat koshcha, Vyahava uvraton, in Chaltanu, Baruch Atah Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat, Amen. Shabbat Shalom, my friends. Shabbat Shalom. So we're going to continue now with hand washing. That's another way that we sanctify Shabbat. Again, it's a rabbinic ordinance, and it comes from temple times where the ritual of hand washing after Kedush and before the blessing of the bread was originally decreed only for the priests before they ate their sacred food. Eventually, it was extended to all Jews, and this is the one part of the ritual that most people here in the United States apparently do not do but we do it here on one shul. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kidishanu b'mitzvotam, v'tzivanu al nitilat yadayi. Didn't that sound like Lanny? Actually, when I went to review these slides and I pressed on this, I thought maybe I had put the music over the wrong slide. We're going to move on to the challah now. And this is our final ritual before we partake of our Shabbat meal, blessing of the bread. And even though the picture doesn't show it, we have two loaves and the knife is, and the loaves are supposed to be covered both above and below. We raise them and then we say the blessing. Now we have two slides for this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Voice is really getting bad. Uh, Mari, this is one of our evening blessings, and this is one I could not find the music for, so I'm not going to mutilate this by trying to read the transliteration. I am going to go ahead and read it from the Hebrew, and you can let me know it if, it, if it even remotely resembles <laughs> what the transliteration looks like, because I can't quite tell, and I do apologize for that. No, I'm not dyslexic. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam asher bidvaro ma'ari v'aravim v'chokmah poteach sharim u'vifunam meshana itim u'machalif et hazamanim u'msader et ha'chavim b'mishmoro tehem baraki ha'kipsano Excuse me for making noise down here, but I have to re run my finger across the uh, Hebrew letters. Boreyom velayla goleom bitnei chotesh, hoshech, bechoshech, mikbenei or, uma avir yom umeve laila, uma avdil ben yom uvein laila, adonai tzvaot shemo. El chai vakayam tamid yamlok. Alenu leolam vayad, Baruch Ata Donai, Hamari Vadavim, 
Amen. Now, fortunately, we do have music to listen for this one with the Vashamru. If you now how to read that version of transliteration. Oh, the translation is spot on. Thank you. Um, good, because I can't tell, and I know I mutilated some words. I can always tell when, I'm, when I get something wrong. Sometimes it's hard for me. And I'm reading with all the cantillation and the vowels in, and I'm still having a little bit of a problem, but um, y'all are just my guinea pigs. But I did want to... Um... Oh, hi, Vicki. How are you? Um, missed the uh, missed you. Glad you're back with us. As you can see, everybody we love is here. Isn't that marvelous? Except Blaney's in Bike Week in Daytona. Um, well, I was just telling you that um, you all are my guinea pigs, so I keep practicing my Hebrew with you. And sooner or later, I'll get it down pat and I won't stumble at all. And in the meantime, I appreciate you bearing with me. But I did want to get this transliteration up for you because I know that a lot of you like to say the Hebrew, but you don't read it. So usually I just put up the English and the Hebrew, which is actually very piggish of me, and I guess I shouldn't be saying that word on Shabbat. But now we're at uh, Vashamru, and this is from Exodus 31, 16 through 17. And basically what it's saying is we keep the Sabbath as a sign of our covenant with God. Vishamaru Vene Israel Et HaShabbat Lassor Et HaShabbat Levdoratam Berit Olam Vene Oven Vene Israel Otid Leolam Otid Leolam Vishamaru Vene So while this is fresh in your mind, this is the second uh, blessing or prayer that we've had up that I put music over the words. Do you like this better than just having the words up there and no music or having the music and not having the words up? And I'm going to go ahead and say hi to Vicki. Casey sends love and Vicki, his new dog, my new dog nanny for Casey is working out fine. But Casey sends love to you. prefer the words and the music. And Adele, nice thing to say. Thank you so much. Happy guinea pig here. I take that as a compliment coming from you so much. Thank you. Okay. Music and the words. Good, and I'll keep working on that then to uh, get that for the rest. And I think the music is slow enough that you can hear it and follow along with either the Hebrew or the transliteration that's up.
Kabbalah Shabbat, as you know, means reception of the Sabbath, and the Talmud tells us uh, of Rabbi Hanina, who put on his Shabbat clothes, stood outside at sunset and said, come let us go forth and meet the Queen of Shabbat. And Rabbi Hanina did similarly, donned his festive robes and loudly exclaimed, come O bride, come O bride. And here we have, the sun has already disappeared beyond the treetops. Come let us go and welcome the Sabbath Queen. She is already descending among us, holy and blessed, and with her are angels, a host of peace and rest. Come, O Queen, come, O Queen, peace be unto you, O angels of peace. Sit among us, O pure Shabbat Queen, and enlighten us with your splendor. And my favorite line, tonight and tomorrow, then you may pass on. And we, for our part, will honor you by wearing beautiful clothing, by singing Zemrod, by praying, and by eating three meals, and with complete rest, and with pleasant rest. Now, Lahadodi, the stories that I just told you about rabbis, uh, Hanita, uh, from the Talmud, supposedly this Lahadodi comes from those stories from Rabbi Sinina and Yanai. And the refrain is up at the top in italics. It has multiple verses. What you're going to hear is the italics for the refrain repeated multiple times. And the first and the last verse are going to be included in this musical version. And this is one of my favorites. Turn your computer sound down a little bit because sometimes this is, comes out a little shrill. <laughs> And while I'm here looking at the uh, chat room here, I would love for you to send me some uh, audio. I would really appreciate that, Adele. One of the problems that I had was, for instance, we have Hashki Venu coming up. There's a lot of music for it, but all they have are the first couple of lines and the last couple of lines. They don't have anything in between. And what I wanted was the words along with the music so that it could be followed along. Now, I did find one that I really liked, except it was five minutes long. So maybe at the end of the service, you can let me know if you'd like to do that at some point. Or maybe next time I'll go ahead and put the music over the Hoshki Venu slide and see how you like it and whether it's worth the uh, five minutes of having the music with it. 
and you can let me know that. Now the reason there's a black slide up here is because I'm going to play music on this in just a moment. This is for the Shema. We're going to play the first two lines. As you know, this is about our declaration of faith in one God. It's one of our most important prayers from Deuteronomy 6, lines 4 through 9. You know that we're obligated to say it twice a day, in the morning and at night. Now, the first two lines are the ones we probably know the best. However, only the first line is in the Torah. The second line is a rabbinic edition. So let's listen to the first two lines, and then what I'd like us to do, if you don't mind, we'll read together the first paragraph. Now let's read together. I'm, we'll read this in English since uh, some of you may, well, English is probably all of our languages. And I think it's important that we actually feel this while we're reading it. So I'm going to read it in English. And you shall love Hashem your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your being. And these words which I command you on this day shall be upon your heart and you shall teach them to your children and speak of them. And while sitting in your house and while walking along the way and upon lying down and upon rising, and you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and your gates. And I'm going to stop here for just a second because I'm getting overwhelmed. I'm seeing everybody here and I want to tell you that my Shabbats have been um, a little sad for me now that I don't have uh, Lauren and Yona with me. You are my family now. I love all of you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad all of you are here. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Troy, Alexanne, Lavana, Vicki, Adele, Guest920, who I'm going to presume is Doc, and Gus, whom we have missed, all of us have missed you, Franklin, my dear sweet Franklin, and guest 877. Okay, now we'll go, go ahead and go on. Anyway, the uh, Hashki Veno. So this is a petitionary prayer, and it, basically what we're praying for is that we go to sleep in peace at night and that we return to life the next day. And as I say, I found some beautiful music for this, but it was almost five minutes long. And so I'm just going to go ahead, <clears throat> since my voice is still a little scratchy, I'm not even going to attempt this in Hebrew. We'll go ahead and read this in English. And you can go ahead and follow along in either the Hebrew or the uh, transliteration. May we lie down, Hashem, our Elohim, in peace, and may we arise our sovereign to life. Spread over us the shelter of your peace, guide us with your good counsel, and save us for the sake of your name, and protect us for our sake, and remove from us enemies, disease, and war, and famine, and anguish, and remove the opponent from before us and from behind us. Under the shadow of your wings hide us, for the one who guards us and saves us is you, for you are the sovereign of mercy and compassion. Guard us when we go out and when we return, for life and for peace, from now until eternity. Blessed are you, Hashem, who safeguards his people Israel forever. Amen.
Sorry, just having a little bit of a problem with the slides here. Now, um, for those of you have, who have been here before, you know the Micha Mocha slide have changed a couple of times. And I think this one is absolutely wonderful, so much better than what we've been having before. You can let me know how you like this one. By the way, this is also known as Miriam's song, and it's from Exodus 15. It answers the question, who is like you, Lord? And of course, there are none like him. Well, Franklin, if you ever decide to dance, please tape it and send it to me so I can play you along with this. That would be very interesting to see. It seems like most of you like this, and I like the music, and I think the pictures are, are beautiful. So now we're going to move on to Psalm 92, which we don't usually do, and I'm actually not sure that we've ever done it before, which is a little odd, uh, because this psalm is one for, particularly for Shabbat. The Talmud says that this is a hymn that the Levites chanted in the temple. I'll read this in English. A psalm to sing for the day of Shabbat. It is good to give thanks to Hashem and to sing praise to your name, O exalted one, to declare your kindness in the morning and your faithfulness in the nights. With stringed instruments and with lyra and with singing accompanied by a harp, for you make me rejoice in your deeds, Hashem. I exult in the work of your hands. How great are your works, Hashem. Your thoughts are exceedingly profound. The ignorant do not know this, and a fool cannot understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, they may seem to flourish, but their end will be destruction. For you are supreme forever, Hashem. For behold your enemies, Hashem. For behold your enemies shall perish and all who do evil shall be scattered. But you have exalted me like the horn of an ox. I am anointed with rich oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my foes and those who rose up to harm me. My ears have heard their end. The righteous shall flourish like the date palm, grow tall like a cedar in Lebanon, planted in the house of Hashem. They shall flourish in the courts of our Elohim. They shall bear fruit in old age. They shall ever be fresh and fragrant. Fragrant, they shall proclaim that Hashem is great, my rock in whom there is no wrong. And now we'll move on to the Hatsi Kaddish or the Half Kaddish, sometimes called the Reader's Kaddish, as you know because it's a separator between parts of the service. And since we have an interactive part, I thought this, as I usually do, is um, this hymn about the greatness of God. It's definitely a separator between our interactive part and our prayerful part. So here is the Hatzikadosh. Yitkadah, 
Love the pictures in that one. Excuse me. <clears throat> this is uh, Our Healing by Debbie Friedman. This is a new one, and remember the other one was very scratchy. This one, I think, is much better, and you'll really like it. Now, so while we're doing the prayer for healing, I'm going to try and talk over it, and what I'm going to be saying are the names that you type in of anyone that you think is in need of physical or spiritual healing, compassion, restoration, or strength. And remember, you can type in your own name. I'm going to say Terry's name, who is a friend of both Vicki and me. Amy, Leah, and Holly from Gus. And Gus, since things I'm sure aren't quite perfect with you yet, I'm going to say a prayer for you as I have been doing every day. Lavana, for yourself, thank you so much for doing that. I think that you'll give uh, nerve to some other people who may feel that that's going to be useful for them. Abraham Ben Yaakov, John Deere, Rabbi Mark Ben Mayer, Pastor Mike Kay from Adele, myself and my wife Lourdes, I hope that means nothing horrible has happened, Franklin, and you just need some love, and I know that Lourdes does. Yehezkel Ben Avraham from Guest 877. Jim Heitzman, who just got a lung transplant. Wow. And from Alex Ann, Susan. All these people are so lucky to have you thinking of them and putting them in your thoughts and in your prayers and especially since all of us get to pray along with you for them. And let me just say once more, Lavana, since you're here with us, we are all praying for you. 
for your healing of whatever kind you need. We're here for you. I hope you know that. Now, despite the fact that some of us um, may need some healing of some sort, even if it's just compassion or strength, why don't we look back over the past week and think about anything that you're grateful for, and that includes anything if maybe not gratitude isn't the right word, but um, how about something that's made you happy, and you'll get the drift of happy when you hear this music which I know that uh, Troy loves because of uh, who it is. So go ahead and type in anything that has made you happy this week, and I'm going to go ahead and start off with uh, Casey got a good report on his eye this week. That's always the thing that makes me very happy. The other thing that has just come up that's made me very happy is that all of you are here with me tonight. I'm grateful for it, and it's made me happy. Got a much better commander for our CAP squadron yesterday. The snow is gone. Is it gone, Vicki? My father survived an emergency surgery. Guest 877. Wow. That certainly is something to be happy about. Uh, thankful for your family and friends. And for all of you, Lamanna, that's very nice. Being here, having people to rely on, and almost being done with diagnostic journey procedures. Gus, I hope everything goes well and they get to the bottom of this. Adele is addressing guest 877. Troy, we're very glad to have you. And may I say that I'm really, really happy that you didn't need to scoot off tonight because I miss you when you leave. So and the converse, obviously, of something that you're uh, happy for. How about something that's sad, made you worry? Would, did anything nag at you this week? Anything that was bothering you? Anything that really worried you a lot? Feel free to type it in, and I do want to let you know, as always. As I'm sure you can tell already that we're a very embracing and empathic group. To be honest with you, I'm so happy to have all of you here right now. If I did have anything I was worried about this week, I'm not worried about it at the moment. You're having nerve testing done on both hands Tuesday. Wow, Vicki. And you didn't type yourself in for you need support. You need support. And from Gus, getting through a scary incident recently and dealing with the aftermath. And Gus, I just want you to know that I never, ever revealed anything specific to anybody. You were worried about your doctor's visit yesterday. I'm dying to get nosy, but I won't. Can you just type in whether it went okay? I would appreciate it, so I don't need to start worrying. Because then I'll have to uh, send you an email for follow-up and find out what's going on. So worries are to be left behind until the end of Shabbat. So get them out now and be free of them for at least 24 hours. Adele, what a marvelous comment. Yes, let's get them out. So go for it. 
just left a month ago. He joined the Navy, and my daughter left five days ago. We missed them. Oh, my goodness. You and Lourdes must be really, really lonesome. And Gus says, good luck to Vicki. Give me a second, and I'll read Lavanna's. Recently lost a pregnancy at 15 weeks and no one really knew, and I shouldn't have isolated myself, so I was worried and sad. And Gus, giving support to Lavanna's, I'm sure we all do. My condolences, you're in my prayers. And Alexanne, my best friend had surgery and you were worried. Daughter joined the Air Force and we miss her. I hope she's okay. She was crying on the phone. And I'll bet you you were crying at home, Franklin. You and Lourdes both. It went okay just waiting for the results of blood tests. Well, I'm glad the visit went okay, but I hope you don't mind if I still email you and find out. I'm going to go ahead and start this uh, music again if I can here. T.G. Lavana, you are not in Indiana. And guess 877 also to Lavana. Vicki, I'm glad your sugar's doing good, especially if they're going to be poking at you doing some testing. Indiana's been bad this winter. Alex Ann is sending condolences to Lavana. Just worried about my blood sugars, but the doctor says it's normal. Thanks, Troy. Thank you all so much. I'll be praying for all of you as well from Lavana. Well, Lavana, I'm glad I wear waterproof mascara. Franklin is saying that he does indeed miss his daughter and his son, and you are crying. And I knew you were. Franklin, you're a very tender guy, and I knew that. Adele, you know, I was kind of wondering if people knew in the room, and I didn't want to say anything about Indiana jails women for miscarriages. Um, actually, I thought they had to go some, through some kind of procedure first with respect to uh, it has to be reported unless it was verified that it was indeed legitimate. But you know what? Thank you so much for pointing that out. Yeah, Troy, Vicki has uh, an insulin pump, pump, all kinds of little gadget that she wears around with you, and Lavana's saying that that's terrible, Adele. So, yeah, Gus, isn't that absolutely awful? As I say, I think that they um, have to do some checking first. They don't just automatically throw you in, but you do have to go through some kind of a procedure, and Adele, I'm glad, again, you pointed that out because it is horrible. And I'm glad it's working for you, Troy. And Franklin, you are very welcome. My love to all of you. And Lavana, I will pray for you every single day. I had absolutely no idea. And I don't know. Kimberly, I'm glad you made it. Thank you. And I hope you're hanging in there. You missed the uh, part about the healing, so let me just go back and say... Kimberly, as you know, has some physical health problems, and she's in the midst of a big move, and I'm quite certain that she's overdoing much more than she should be, so um, let's all hope that she takes it easy and wish her well during this trying time, and believe me, I'm sure it is trying. I'm glad you made it in, Kimberly. Yeah, Alex, and you're speechless about the Indiana thing. Yeah. When I found out about that quite a while ago, my mouth kind of hung open also. Uh, as far as I know, that isn't anything that's too recent, so don't feel bad about not uh, having heard about it recently because I think that that's been around for a while. 
Kimberly, we're, I hope you weren't out of the room when I was uh, talking about you and telling you that I hope you're not overdoing. So tired. I knew it. Don't worry about being late. You're here. And actually, I've been thinking about you all week anyway, so it doesn't matter. And now I'm going to be adding Lavana. I don't know if you were here in the beginning. Um, but when you get a chance, Kimberly, read through the uh, list here because I'd love to have your prayers added to those who um, have asked for prayers tonight. Okay, what a group we have here tonight. I'm so happy. I'm going to go ahead and put on the Elenu, which, as you know, is the uh, last prayer that we do at the end of all of our three daily services. And um, I may decide to talk over this because I'd still like to continue chatting. <laughs> Well, Kimberly, I, in addition to you being physically stressed from the move, I actually did not know that now you're also emotionally stressed from having to move with your animals, your pussy cats. Um, I hope they travel well and you know we'll pray for you about that. Now, I want to, obviously it's 9 o'clock and we still have, or we don't have to have, because this is not a deep subject, but I'm perfectly happy to close and end here. Um, and not do any of our discussion tonight. It's not important. We're not talking about anything very biblical, if you will. Uh, it's more interesting than imperative. So I'm going to leave it up to you. Kimberly, I'm hoping your husband's going to be doing most of the driving, or are you going to be driving with your cats yourself? And you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and make the decision for us, if you don't mind. I'm a little emotionally stressed. I'm still hung up a little bit on Lavana. Um, glad to see Kimberly. Really glad to see Gus. These are folks that I know have been having a really, really rough time. And now it seems as though there are so many more to add to my list. And I'm sure you'd hang around, but, um, and I thank you. Can we Skype tomorrow? Absolutely, Vicki. And I'm sure all of you could stay, but I really don't want to burden you with this. So, um, 
let me rephrase this then. I've pretty much made the decision that I'm going to go just enjoying the warm fuzzies. By the by, you look good tonight, Ariella. Thank you. Well, if you look at me now, let me just say I'm glad that I've been having, uh, I'll go ahead and put myself up, be glad I had um, some waterproof mascara on because I've been doing my usual. <laughs> sometimes, as you know, sometimes caring hurts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is save this discussion about the uh, Sefer Torah for next time. And it's not that long, but uh, I think that we're just going to go ahead and wait. I need to, um, I need to go do a little boo-hoo and praying. I don't know how to thank all of you for, um, for being here with me tonight. I think about you all during the week, but as I said, this is, um, tonight's been absolutely amazing. And my heart is full of love, and it's also full of hurt and yearning for all of you. And again, I thank you so much for coming. I'm not even going to put up my donate slide tonight, so we'll just skip over that. The only slide that I am going to go ahead and put up is my email slide. So any of you who want to contact me about anything, that's where I am. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, go now. And again, my love to all of you. I'm thinking about all of you. And if you were here in person, I would hug you. But I am hugging you. I can feel myself hugging you. I hope you can feel me doing that for you. So, Shabbat Shalom, my dear ones. Thank you so much.